Between May 15th to June 1st, we travelled to Kelantan to document traditional East Coast ritual arts, a full complement of crew came with us. The production of the documentary was for Pusaka and Radical Films. Pusaka is an NGO committed to the preservation of the ancient ritual arts and performances of the East Coast states, particularly those of Kelantan. These ritual performances predate the arrival of Islam into the peninsula and contain animist, Buddhist and Hindu influences which are anathema to Muslim Malays. There exists a fatwa or religious edict banning these performances. For many years, practitioners and performers have had to commit to the art underground. Together with a group of students of performing arts who were interning with Pusaka. We were interested in the impressions of what they witnessed and experience of the two weeks and how they've been affected, if at all. Okay. Let's see who goes first. Sure. What are what are your impressions of the last few days that uh, that you seen, watched, felt? <clears throat> um, it's very life changing, uh, life changing experience. Because being a Malay, I've never seen such performances in their raw form. So seeing all this actually still happening in Malaysia, I still I feel that. It's really important for us to preserve this and um, it's also important for a lot of people um, who, who hasn't seen this, how important it is for them to actually see it in their raw form, so we have to preserve this. So what about the objections that you think uh, people will, will give, yeah? It was something I said because I mean, it's, uh, to a lot of people it could be rather shocking. Mm. Uh, how would you want to overcome that or how would you think you'd be able to overcome something like that? Well, to change someone's perceptions towards um, things like this, you have to give them a kind of shock, you know. So you can't actually change, you can't actually start changing if something doesn't hit you hard. So this being shocking is actually a good thing for them. What about you? How has this changed you, if at all? Shaken your beliefs, maybe, if at all? Well, the whole thing is like a dream come true for me because I've always wanted to watch like this type of performances and I never have the chance to do so. So this is the first time and we are here at where it is from, you see. And yes, it's um, life-changing because now it's like it opened my mind on you know what I want to do next and, and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, are you Muslim? Yes, I'm Muslim. Okay, so how has, has this affected you, if at all? Um, whether you want it or not, this is your root. You know, this is our tradition. It well, people might say now that you know this is haram or this is shirik or whatever, but that's where you are from, you see, whether you want it or not. It's been emotional and insane and mind-blowingly, this is life-changing as well, because it, every performance has something that I connect myself with, that's why it's kind of emotional kind of thing. Have you seen anything like this before? No, no, <laughs> never. So this is like, as I said, this is very mind, mind blowingly mind. Mm. So just changing. Okay. Um, has it made, has it changed your view of what the Malay is? Yes, very much. Um, how so? How so? Uh, people in Klangan are very, very humble, and. People in KL, they don't treat, I just see them very differently, but when I come here, they're very, they're very humble, they just take you and it doesn't matter what race you are, what colour, where, where you come from, they just, they just accept you, yeah. You're not well for second day, right? Yeah. What happened? Um, 
I was really attracted to the performance and being too attracted to it, I tried to pull myself away from it where, when I just should have let go. And for the past few days of the performance, um, just studying the performers themselves, their, co their presence and their command for the stage has really touched me deeply and it's made me think of the choices I make in life and also being a performing arts student. It's, it, it really opens up my mind and yeah. Um, coming here and seeing these performances have made me more sure of what I would like to do in the future. Um, as I, I would like to work in documentaries and, and coming here, seeing all this has made me more sure as to what I would like to document when I do uh, work in the future. I've seen the Mayan Putri performed before in Kelantan and uh, in KL as well. But this time round, with the whole the f thing done fully with the rituals and it it's intense. At the same time, it's very inviting. So it, it's it's very seductive in a way. It doesn't push you away. It brings you closer, and 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 you can somewhat relate or you can somewhat feel what the uh, Tok Putri is going through when he when he when he feels his emotion. Everything everything from the rituals to his performance and to the movements, everything is just um, mesmerizing and, and uh, really one of a kind. You, you are Malay Muslim? Yes. Okay, so in terms of what he was doing okay, during that uh, performance, um, jumping, uh, jumping without the driver, but the some sort of invoking, invoking spirits, you know? Yeah. Um, what are your views on that? Well, okay, I'm, I'm gonna say in what he told me, he said that, um, I asked him the same question um, in relation to religion and, and all this, the ban and whatnot. And he says that what's so wrong in doing all these rituals where it's to heal someone is like what a doctor does, except it's more, it's in a traditional manner. So if it's something that brings good in someone else or has good intentions, then what's wrong with that? So I, I, I totally agree with that and, and it's, yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with, uh, you know, doing it for good intentions and... The experience, right? Yeah, it's experience. been very, very, like, um, I don't want to say life-changing, very inspiring and challenging because, I mean, it challenges you intellectually, mentally, for me, even spiritually, and it's, it's made me want to go back to my own roots and try to, you know, see what, you know, to understand where we come from, because I think that's really, really important now. Mm. Yes, so yeah. Okay, um, Mayim Putri, uh, Mayong, Mayong, Mayong Kulit, and then now this uh, DK Barak. Okay, you can't say whether this, how this is going to ha happen, but your favourite of, of the ones that you've seen? Um, honestly, I can't choose. They were all so different from each other. So. But they all had different, yeah, and they all had different impacts, so mm -hmm. it's just too different to choose one. <coughs> Cha, your favourite? My favourite, my butchery. <laughs> yeah, my butchery. Because it's very intense, it's very intense. How the top butchery channels is... Um, Channels almost everything from from the inside, you know. Mm. And and we saw different topu trees perform the main tree, and all three of them they have um, distinctively different styles of, of uh, performing the main tree, and I really love main tree. What about you? Your favorite? I've got two favorites. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Wine, cool it, and the uh, main tree. All right. Yep. What's your favorite? <laughs> uh, it's the Mayan Putri and Wayang Kulit. Mayan Putri and Wayang Kulit. <laughs>